Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This video is going to be my monthly haul for June. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is a little bit early because it's not quite June, but I hadn't quite managed doing a video that I had actually planned. I was like, what can I already film? that, you know, I'm pretty sure it's not that big of a deal that this goes live today instead of Saturday. I'm just switching two videos around, so it should be fine. And I've got quite a bit to show you. I received some PR. One of you very kindly gift me, gifted me a package as well. And I went to London. So May was a very intense shopping month, so let me just get to it. Before we get into the video though, it may be good to know who I am and what, like, what I like doing on this channel. My name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands, I have fair skin with a culture neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you would like to consider subscribing. So before we get to the products, I do have to point out real quickly, I'm filming this the day I feel better for the first time in like a week. I've been under the weather all week. So if I sound a bit raspy and congested, then I do apologize, but I'm okay. I'm on the mend, we're almost there. Um, but I can't wait to show you these bits, so let me just get to it. So I want to start with some PR first to get those things out of the way. And I was able to sign up for some Queen Musa products. This is a new, I believe, organic, all natural makeup brand. It was um, at like, I have, I'm part of an affiliate link program and I got a request there to see if I wanted to try any of their products and they've launched a mascara and a whole line of lipsticks. The lipstick is what's on my lips today and this is their, um, does it have a name? <laughs> Matte cream lipstick in the shade Becky Sharp. And of course I had to go for the thing they listed as being a mauve shade. I couldn't find any swatches for these anywhere. It is a little bit more brown peach than like a cooler tone mauve, but in terms of like a good nude for my complexion, I think this works really well. So I wanted to try this. I use it for the first time today. It's my first day in a week being able to wear lipstick because I had a really bad cold sore. Um, but yeah, I felt it was safe to try some lipstick this time around. And look at this packaging. Look at how fun that is. It looks like a candle. Um, it's, it's a bit of a weird shape for sure, but I think it, it definitely stands out in your makeup collection. And the mascara, this is the mascara 25, no, 20053. I haven't tried this yet um, because I still have quite a bit of other mascara to get to first. Um, but yeah, it's a square tube, again, in that same light green packaging. And uh, let me see what the brush is like. I did already have a look, but it's just, it just looks like a standard mascara, nothing too special. It does smell a bit like plasticky, but yeah, I now that I've opened it, I know I need to get to this very, very soon before it dries out. Um, but yeah, I, I'm currently not using anything that's going to last a super long time in terms of mascara. So I can definitely report back on, on this, I think already in June or July, uh, to see how much I like this one. Um, because I do have an Essence Mascara in my Shop My Stash at the minute. So check out my Shop My Stash video if you want to hear my thoughts on this mascara. And the other bit of PR that I received is why the lovely people of What's Up Beauty. What's Up Beauty is the only brand that I've worked with and that have sent me PR a few times and that keep sending me PR and that are so supportive and who really just are very kind also in their messages. Like, I, uh, when they first launched the highlighters, they sent me a message saying, hey, would you like to receive these or not? And I said, no thanks. And they were like, okay, great. And then they launched their new lipstick and eyeliners and asked me again. And then they send me those and they're like, oh, you haven't tried the highlighters yet. And guess what? When I opened the package, they also send me the highlighters and they make you have no obligation to show products or anything like that. So what's a beauty? Thank you very much for sending these. I'm very happy with this. Um, but yeah, they launched lipsticks and eyeliners. And this line is Egypt inspired, like ancient Egypt. And if you don't know anything about me, when I was a teenager, I was hardcore into mythology, especially Egyptian and like Roman and Greek mythology. I knew everything there was. I would only be reading books about that. And I almost wrote a history 
project at school about Egyptian mythology. I think I may have actually still have that somewhere. Um, there are three shades. These are the stickers at the bottom. And when I got them home, I was like, mm, these look a little bit more warm tone than I had expected. But I, I just want to show you the packaging. Like, look how stunning this bright blue packaging is. Again, this is going to stand out in your makeup collection. And these feel like really rich and creamy lipsticks. So my favorite shade of the three that I think I'm going to get the most use out of is Siba, right? Or Shiba? Siba. That's what this is called. And here is what that lipstick looks like. It's, it's again, going to be like a good neutral for me, I think. But the rest, a bit too orange. Um, Eye of Ra. I think this is really nice, like a good nude for people with a warmer undertone. Uh, and do you see what that print looks like? I'm not sure if my camera is picking up on it or not, but it's got this really pretty embossing and we're seeing this more and more. Um, and then finally, the deeper one is Ankh. And I always wanted to get a tattoo with that symbol, but never did. <laughs> but when I was a teenager, I definitely wanted to get this tattooed somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is such a pretty shade as well. Again, a little bit too orange in the undertone. But in terms of like Egypt, and like I'm thinking of like desert sand, and it's like three shades that you can find in the desert. That's kind of how I feel about this lipstick range. So it definitely goes. And then they have these two eyeliners and one of them is a black. The other one, I'm not sure if you can see the sticker there, is a multi-chrome. I haven't tried these, but they do have a very fine tip. This is the multi-chrome one, which is like a blue, green, gold kind of thing. Um, I'm not much of a liquid eyeliner wearer though, but. The black looks super black, so I'm really happy with those. So really looking forward to trying those. And then they sent me their Serengeti highlighter. So these are products I haven't tried yet. I have Wild I Acacia, Acacia, I don't know how to say that in English. Um, but this is the lighter one of the two. A really nice cool tone pink with like a golden champagne. And this is something I didn't know until I got the PR package on the little pamphlet that came with it. These highlighters are supposed to have both a warmer and a cooler tone so that you can either wear one of them or that you can mix them together if you'd like. And the deeper one is Safari Sunset. I love the packaging of these. So pretty. And here again, you get that lighter, cooler pink and like a more bronze tone in there. So I've swatched these and both of them are so good for pale skin. It's it's really, really good. So when I swatched them, I was super happy to see them. I haven't tried them on my face yet. Haven't gotten around to it because there's quite a lot in this haul here. And that's why I'm going to go on to another low buy because I have plenty of makeup to see me through the next three to four months, I'm sure. So I'm super grateful to both of these brands for sending me these products and for me to, you know, tr trust me and try them out. Um, so far, so good. I still need to put these on my face though. So these will be rolled into Shop My Stashes in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to hear my full thoughts, then just watch my Shop My Stashes because that's where I'm going to be sharing all because it's mainly like lipsticks and stuff and lipsticks I tend to talk about mainly in my uh, shop my stash videos unless I have like a full line or something then I do a video but these things unless they become like favorites they might end up in other videos of course eventually but at this point I don't know because I've only swatched them and this is the first time I'm wearing that Queen Musa um, lipstick on my lips which I very much like the look of it's a good nude for me for sure so let me get to um, the gift that I received. So a few weeks ago, I did my eyeshadow palette week for you guys. And in one of those videos, I mentioned how I was still sort of umming and ahhing about getting the um, Natasha Denona Biba palette. And then one of my lovely subscribers, Kim said, hey, I still have it lying around. I'm never using it. Would you like to have it? And I was like, nah, I'm okay, it's fine. And then um, I think it was right before I went to London, I suddenly got a message saying there was a package waiting for me. I was like, I didn't order anything. What's this? And then it said her name on it. It was like, oh, she must have sent the palette. And then she, she didn't just send the palette. She sent an entire care package and I'm super grateful. So Kim, thank you so very much for sending me these bits. I'm going to put them to good use. You're gonna see these palettes in upcoming reviews. 
um, and the blushes and stuff that you send me as well. I'm going to definitely be trying them out. Um, um, please, if you are a subscriber as well and now think, oh, I should send Mike something as well, you really don't have to. I don't have a public address. It's just that I came and happened to have my address because I was, I had sent her a giveaway price because she was one of my giveaways, uh, uh, winners in the past. So please don't ask for my address or anything like that. I'm not expecting subscribers to send me anything. I'm, I can manage just fine, but I'm super grateful that she thought of me and that she did. Um, so I'll show you the extra bits first. Um, these things I really had not expected would be in there. And uh, one of the things she sent me was a L'Oreal foundation in the shade Ivory. And this is the Infallible Foundation. And this is one of my favorite L'Oreal foundations. I'm just not sure anymore whether shade 20 ivory was my shade or not. So that's why I still have it sealed because I need to go back into my uh, reviews because I know I've tried this foundation in the past and I've reviewed it and I remember really struggling finding my shade. So if this is not my shade, if I know that, if I have that written anywhere on my blog, this is why it's so helpful that I have my blog that I can just go back years and see like, oh, did that work for me or not? So I know I like the formula, but I may want to pass this on to someone else, else if it's not my shade. So I still need to check it out. And then she also sent me a mascara by AOA, which is the um, Shop Miss A brand, I think it was called. So can try that. And then she sent me P. Louise stuff. Two of their blushes. And they are really, really nice cool tone shades as well. One of them is Legally Pink, which is this really nice cool tone pink. And then Melon Mood, which is actually my favorite of the two. It's a slightly warmer tone. Like this is a bit more peach leaning. This is a little bit more of a true cool pink, but they are really nice and light. They are pretty similar in undertone though. And for me, P. Louise is a new brand that I've never tried before. I've never tried this brand, so I can't wait to try them. So I can already tell you because I've swatched everything already that I don't like the packaging of this. Um, maybe I can show you. It has a little like pump and you need to press it down, squeeze it and pump it out at the same time else the product won't be uh, like coming out. So I don't think I love the packaging on this because I tend to be someone who likes to put a bit of liquid blush on the back of their hand and then blend it onto their cheeks for the best look. But these will have to go straight onto my cheeks because uh, else I don't think it's going to be working really well with the dispension of the product because on the back of my hand, like when I was trying to swatch them, I barely got any product out. The packaging isn't my favorite, but the shades look really nice. And then she sent me palettes. Palettes, multiple palettes. And indeed, she sent me her Biba. And I swatched it. I think it's a really stunning palette. It had only been swatched like once or something. It was like, it had never been used. Like it doesn't even look like there was ever a brush in here. Um, so I've swatched it now and this is definitely warmer than what I normally go for. But in terms of like a really good neutral palette, this pretty much has everything that you could ask for. So I'm definitely going to be popping this into a review to see how much I like it. And then she sent me, I couldn't, like when this was in the package, I was like, you know me so well. <laughs> Cause she sent me a Moira palette. Again, I've never tried a Moira palette before. I've tried Moira products, but I haven't tried their eyeshadow palettes cause I could never decide which one to buy. This is Endless Moonlight from their Celestial series. It's a bit chunky, but look at that color story. It's, now that I'm looking at it, it's, it's giving Biba vibes, isn't it? <laughs> It kind of is, uh, but it's got warmer tones here. These are more neutral and the entire bottom row is cool tone. So can't wait to play with this. It's swatched beautifully. So Kim, this is, this is the one thing that I'm like super excited for, because this is one thing that I still wanted to try myself. So for you to then send it to me was just amazing. She also threw in this sugar pill palette. And can you believe it? I've never tried sugar pill eyeshadow, say for my little, um, like the pastel neon palette, what was it called? Fun size. I've never tried anything else by them. And this is the uh, capsule palette um, in the 10th anniversary version. It comes with a blush and then these really fun, colorful shades. And it's swatched beautifully again as well. So can't wait to try this. Um, I haven't tried much sugar pill at all. 
So this is also a brand I feel is quite new to me as well. And finally, this one I need to be careful with, but she also sent me this very colorful palette from Glam Shop. And one of the shades is a bit fragile, so it keeps crumbling every single time I open it. it. Actually came a little bit shattered in the package, but that's why the palette is a little bit messy. But it's sort of like neutrally peach shades over here. You get some neons, these bright pinks. And this is the culprit. This is the one that keeps cracking. But you also get some purples in here. So I know I like Glam Shop already. They do some really lovely things. This has a lot of shimmers. It's a bit more colorful than I normally go for. So I don't know how I feel about this one when I try it. Um, and I can't read the name. Um, if you know Polish, if you can let me know what this is called, then please let me know because I don't want to butcher that. So those are all of the gifts and other things out of the way, but I also did some regular shopping. I went to London, as I mentioned, so I'll leave those bits for the end of the video, but I also placed some other orders. And one order I actually had wanted to include in my May haul, but it didn't arrive in time for me to feature it in that video. And there was actually another thing that happened in that video, if you saw it, because I had placed an order with YesStyle for some K-Beauty cushion foundations. And my uh, Espoir, uh, I think that's how you pronounce the brand, at least that's how I would say it. My Espoir, um, what's this called? Uh, Pro Taylor B Glow Cushion Foundation came completely shattered. The packaging, outer packaging was completely broken. So I send the message to YesStyle to ask if they could replace it or if I could get my money back because this is not an this is not a cheap product. This was actually one of the more expensive cushion foundations I had, and I was like, oh well, it's just a packaging. I can still try it, but I decided to mess uh, to send them a mes message anyway. And at first, the customer services rep was like, you should have sent a, pal a, a a message within two weeks, and I was like, oh, that's weird. I'm pretty sure I send them a message within two weeks of receiving the package. So I went on to YesStyle to see when I had sent them the message. And then it said indeed that it was within the two weeks. So send them a message again and said, hey, I send you the message on that and that date, which is within two weeks of me receiving the, the package. So I don't know what the issue seems to be. And then without questions asked, I, was, I received an, um, a shipping notification and they sent me a new one. So this is the brand new one. This one is intact, which is great. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, it's got this really nice mirror packaging and that's a cushion foundation that I wanna try. Now that I have tried all of the foundations that I was still like due to review, I can start reviewing these cushion foundations in June. So that's when this will happen. So this was sent to me by YesStyle because the, as a replacement for the other one. So, because it was broken. And then I sent, um, and then the package that didn't arrive on time for the previous video was my order from Olive Young. And Olive Young is a Korean website. They are a Korean beauty store from Korea and they have a website that ships internationally. And there I was able to find the Fui Cushion Glass, Gla Cushion Glass Natural. And this is the actual packaging. I just had the refill from YesStyle. So I was like, mm, if I can't find it, I'll just use the refill. But this is what the Fui one looks like. I'm glad to have the packaging now. And then because I was on that website, they have this huge like offer for this brand, Yung Se Mool. I hope that's how I'm supposed to say it. So this is another more expensive brand. And this is their Essential Skin Neuter Cushion Fair Light. Um, and this is what that one looks like. So that's another one I can try. I now have 12 cushion foundations. So if I try like three every month, I can do a roundup review in September, or early October-ish. That's sort of the aim. And then I had seen this on TikTok and I wanted to try them so badly. So I got two shades. This is the, um, oh, it doesn't say, but they're like the lip and cheek pudding product. And it's like, it's such a, it's such a weird texture. It's like a little mousse almost. It feels like a pudding when you touch it. It's very strange. Like if you've ever had like, um, my mom used to make this. It was like, if, if we wanted to do like special for dessert, it wasn't that special, but she would like take milk and this like powdered package and she would like whip it up. And it's that sort of like moussey sort of texture. That's what it reminds me of. And I got it in shade D-Day, which is like a really nice cooler tone red. 
And the second one I have is in the shade Slay. And Slay is like a mauve and the D-Day shade is like this pinky tone red. They're really, really pretty. The only thing with all of Young is that because I shipped from Korea, I was hit with custom fees. So it was a little bit more expensive than I had wanted to. Um, that's the difference with uh, YesStyle because YesStyle ships from China. You won't get the shipping and handling fees afterwards. <laughs> Um, but with this I was, so maybe I won't be ordering from the website anytime soon because of that reason. And I may just have to wait for YesStyle to get things because it's been easiest for me to shop through there anyways. And this way I was like, hmm, I can try something differently and it ended up being a little bit more expensive than I had wanted to. I didn't know that I was going to receive those palettes from Kim uh, because if I had known that I may have waited with this order from Monolith before getting it, but I did order some palettes from Monolith that just happened to be in stock. And I was like, you know what? I can try these brands again or for the first time. So um, when it comes to trying brands again, I have mentioned before in a couple of videos in April that I would definitely, definitely wanna try the Glaminatrix Sugar and Spice palette. I had a huge, huge eyeshadow palette collection binge watching series back in March. And, and that made me just convinced that I should try this. Upon arrival, I was a bit, bit disappointed with it. This packaging is very sort of sticky and it was stuck to the cardboard of the packaging. So I had to rip the cardboard off to get the palette out. I was like, just put a bit of a protective layer so it won't stick to anything. Oh well. Um, and then when I opened it, these pans are not the same size as the regular eyeshadow palettes from Glaminatrix. I did try their nude palette. I think it was called Nearly Natural. These are smaller. These are like more like ColourPop size, if you know what I mean. So they're a little bit smaller than I had expected. The entire top row here is like duochrome, multi-chrome, like shifty shades. And then everything else is like essentially a cool tone neutral or a pastel. And that's why I wanted to try it. This just looks like it's right up my street. It's perfect for spring. So I definitely wanted to try it. And I've tried two palettes from Glaminatrix before and they didn't wow me. And with this, I'm like, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen with this either. But yeah, I think color story wise, it's definitely something a little bit more unique for my collection which is why I decided to bite the bullet on this one and buy it. But I am a touch disappointed now that I have it. And secondly, um, I'm on the hunt for some Clarity Cosmetics. If you saw my haul last month, I bought the Deadly Roses palette then, and then I saw that they still had the Mini Bloom in stock. So I was like, might as well try it. Uh, and this is what the palette looks like. It's blues, greens, teals, and purples. I can't wait to try this. Apparently the palette has been discontinued on the official website. So it seems to be like also a monolith while stocks last, you can still get this. But yeah, I just wanted to try some more clarity. So the plan is I think in June or July to put both of my clarity palettes into the same review so that we can have all my thoughts on the brand after trying two of their palettes in one video. I thought that would be helpful. And then finally I bought the Alien Cosmetics. No, on Earthly Cosmetics. Why do I keep calling them that? That's the old name, but I bought the Dreamer palette because so many of you were telling me that this would be a perfect color story for me. And I do have to agree, now that I've swatched it, it looks a lot better. Like in the pan, it looks like this side is a bit warmer than it actually is. Like this peach on me, I felt was more purple than a, a, an actual peach. So I feel that with this one, looks can be deceiving. And this is the updated unearthly formula which i haven't tried all of my unearthly palettes are older from back when they were alien cosmetics sometimes even which is why i keep calling them that i think so i wanted to try something with the newer formula if i like this the sorcerer smoke is also on the list to be bought at some point in time if i don't love this and if i'm like this is just overpriced and it's nothing different from what they have done in the past then I'm, I'm probably going to leave it at it at, as is. Then they are going to have to come out with a really, really unique color story for me to like bite the bullet and really want to try it. So that was the Monolith stuff that I tried. And then I placed one more order. Um, these are sort of the things that I order 
you know, because of the AdSense that I make with this channel, just in case you were wondering. Every month, this channel makes a bit of money and I put it towards buying makeup. So both the Monolith stuff and the next order I did uh, fell into that category this month and it was M Cosmetics. So this is their most iconic product probably. And I, I had been wanting to buy another one of their liquid blushes in this little dropper style for the longest time because they changed the packaging. I had four of these of which I've kept one because I just like my Apier ones a little bit better. And the Apier ones were very similar to what this had to offer. So the shades were too similar. I gave one away to a friend. I think I, no, two of them I gave away to friends and then I kept one in my makeup memory box and one shade that I wore the most is the one that I kept. But they did this really, really pretty shade called Little Lilac, which they added later. And I just really wanted to try it. So this is a really nice like lavender li lilac -y kind of blush. I'm really in my cool tone blush era at the minute. So I was like, this is another thing that I can try. And then hopefully sometime later this year, I can do an updated cool toned blush video for sure. Cause I've been, I've been trying some cool tone blushes this year, you guys. So that one, I just wanted to try for the shade. Now a product I knew I liked, but again, that I decluttered cause it was too similar to other things I already had in my collection was their cream stick blush. And this is now in Venetian Rose, the So Soft blush. And Venetian Rose is the shade in the liquid formula that I love so much, which is why I got it in a stick formula. And in the Heaven's Glow blush, because the Heaven's Glow blush in, I think it's in Baroque. And the other one I have is in Magic Hour. They are two of my favorite glowy blushes. And I was like, this is really pretty too. It's a bit deeper perhaps, but in terms of like a rosy mauve sort of leaning shade. And these are really sheer. They're more like blush toppers more so than anything. So I thought this could be really pretty. And I was like this with like the cream stick blush underneath it, I thought could be a winner. So for me, this is just one of the best products that M Cosmetics does. And in order to make this brand worth it for me, I need to buy more than one thing because there was really only one thing I wanted to get. Uh, so we'll get to that last because that's the most exciting thing. But I rounded it out with some other products I wanted to try. And then they also have the pillow plush blush. I went heavy on the blush with this order in the shade Tickled. And this came with a little sponge. It's like a putty formula. And this is again a really pretty sort of like softer mauve tone. Can't wait to give that a whirl. It's more like a cream than a powder. Um, and they came out with single eyeshadows, which I also hadn't tried. And this is like a really interesting shade. It, it reminds me a bit of Starboy by Luxy Beauty because this is in the shade Luna. Yeah, Luna. And it's not a gold, it's not a silver, yet it's both of those things at the same time. It's really pretty. It's a very nice cool toned option. It's like a very vibrant taupe, I feel. So you, we all know how I feel about taupes. And the palette that I placed the order for, this came out at the end of 2023. I hadn't placed an order with M Cosmetics because of the shipping and handling fees they charge you um, since like, I don't know, since 2022. I think I bought them two years ago for the last time. So this is like a long time in the making, but then they um, released the Divine Skies eyeshadow palette in Saturn's Return. Saturn's Return. So you knew I had to try it. There are two warm tones. This is warm, this is warm. Everything else is cool toned. So you knew I had to try it. Um, I hope it's just as lovely as Rodin, which is the one I have, which is more neutral. This is a bit more cool toned leaning. For some people, this is not gonna be cool toned enough. I can already tell you right off the bat, but this is a palette I really wanted to try this year. So this is something I budgeted for, and now I felt the time was right to place in this larger order. What I have noticed since ordering from this brand last time is that they now calculate the shipping and handling fees, including customs at checkout. Cause I had initially one or two more products that I had on my wish list 
to like add it to the order as well but then the shipping and handling fees became like a hundred euros and if i took took those two things out i was like under the threshold of what you're legally allowed to import without adding import to import costs um and then the uh, shipping and handling fees were a lot lower this is still an expensive brand to try if you're in europe <laughs> i'm not gonna lie this is incredibly expensive to get um, which is a why I'm super happy that I could put some AdSense towards it because I did eyeshadow palette week in April. My channel did a little bit better than it normally does. So I was like, I can splurge. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so yeah, I bought those bits. And then of course I went to London. If you, if you've seen my second channel, if you are in touch with what I do on there, you will have already seen the vlog. And I told you in that vlog, I'll show you what I got in London in some other videos. So if you check out my uh, fashion haul that went live yesterday over on my second channel, you can see the clothing bits I picked up. And then these are all the makeup -y and beauty bits that I got. So makeup and beauty wise, there is always a bit of a wish list when I go to London. And one of the things that I have to pick up when I go to London is body care. And this, this is, sounds absolutely outrageous, outrageous but my, one of my favorite body wash products is this, the original source Tingly Mint and Tea Tree uh, Shower Gel. This, I, I just grabbed one from like, <laughs> from my little stash, but I only bought one of these. I think last year I bought like two or three and I still have like a small one somewhere as well. I tend to go through these really quick, quickly, like more, like quicker than other body washes I have. But I have been going to Germany where I can pick up shower gel for like 55 cents as well. So I still have a lot of body wash. So I was like, you know what? I still have some from the body shop. I still have those German ones I need to get through. I still have one or two of these as well. So I don't need to stock up majorly. I'm good for body wash for a while to come. Um, but yeah, this is like two pounds 15 for this gigantic bottle. They also do the small ones, which always used to be one pound and then the big ones used to be two. They have gone up in price, but this is like the best deal in terms of body wash I've ever found. And I love this scent. I was ill all week and this scent in the shower when you're ill, it clears your airways instantly because it's so minty and I just love it. It's great for morning showers, but I even like it at nighttime. It puts me to sleep as well. Very calming and like spa-like, which I like. Of course I had to get one of these. Uh, again, I just grabbed one. Uh, I think I put the new ones at the bottom of my drawer, um, but this one, this could have been one I picked up last year. But again, while I was in London, there was a buy two, uh, get one free deal on all the Soap and Glory stuff. So they have this limited edition as well. So I got two of the Smoothie Star Body Butter. This is their Body Butter with um, Shea Butter, uh, Pistachio Almond and Coconut Oil. It's one of my favorite body butters of all time because it has this really nice, sweet, nutty scent, which I like, but without it being sickly sweet. It, it's not like candy sweet. And then they also had this limited edition called Freshest Fig. And when I smelled it in the sore, it really smelled like fresh figs and not like fake figs. So I wanted to try that one as well. That one does come with only half the size, but I was like, again, I still, I bought like three of those back in August. So I've only gone through one or two of those because I also still have a bunch of body shop body butters. So I sort of go back and forth between them. Um, so yeah, I still have plenty of body butter, but this way I have a nice little stash. I also want to get some skincare usually when I'm like abroad. And in London, you can find several of the ordinary dedicated stores. I went to the one in East London because it's the first one I ran into. Um, but I just like the way they display the products. And over here in the Netherlands, we can really only get it online. And it's just nice to see the products, you know, you can grab it off a shelf. So from the ordinary, I got the caffeine solution, um, which is like their eye anti-puffiness thing. And I always use something that uh, works with that <laughs> in the mornings for my morning skincare routine, because it just works for me. Then I really like the Buffet Serum, but they, they have renamed it. And now they do a version with copper peptides. It's the very blue one, apparently. So this was a bit more expensive than the original version. And I was sort of, sort of umming and ahhing between the older, now it's just called Multi-Peptide Serum. 
um, and this one, and I was like, mm, this is new, I might as well try it. <laughs> so went with that, and then I have, I don't remember anymore why I got this one. I'd have to look it up. Um, but this is the Reservatrol Ferulic Acid. So I think this is like a antioxidant kind of active formula. Um, I don't remember why I picked this up, but the description sounded like something that I might like. And it's again one I haven't tried from them before. Um, then, where to start? Like, I feel I did pretty good when I was in London. Like, I could have gotten so much more stuff. But I didn't. I, I wanted to I wanted to pace myself because uh, I have plenty of other trips coming this month and uh, like this year. Um, so I can definitely get myself to a Sephora. I actually ended up not going to Sephora at all. So I went to both Boots and Superdrug to buy a couple of bits and I ended up not buying a huge amount of makeup because I felt like I already had so much. So in Superdrug, I always go to the one on the Strand. They had all of the new e.l.f. blushes out as well, also in Boots. Uh, I don't remember where I picked this one up exactly, but this is the Camo Liquid Blush in the shade... Can I read this? Suave Mauve, I think? I think that's what it's called. It's the mauve one. one, um, because what else is new? Um, so that's the one that appealed to me the most upon a swatch, so I wanted to try that one. I got an extra one of the blushed liquid blushes from MUA. Um, this is a dupe for the Glossier Clout paints, and I really enjoy them. I got three of them last year, but one of the shades I got wasn't really my shade, so I decided to go for Rouge Noir, which is like this like cooler toned, richer berry shade, which is very much marketed to darker skin tones than mine, but I love those kind of shades on myself, especially in a liquid formula. Then my splurge item at the drugstore was this. This is by Mina, and this is their multi-stick, the No Rule Stick in shade 385. So this can be used on the lips, on the cheeks, on the eyes. It can be used everywhere. And so I got one of those. Mina is one of my favorite drugstore brands. And in the UK, they sell it in store. I also found it in Spain. But there they had the full collection and I just couldn't choose what to get. Plus I was flying hand luggage only, so I knew I would be limited in what I could bring back. And this way I was like, okay, I can buy one of those things. And then I also got three MUA eyeshadow palettes, which is what I was hoping to be able to find. Last year I picked up two of the cooler toned options from this little five pan line and then I saw that they also did a rosy one. This is Desert Bloom, which is like, it's it's essentially the soft rose five in a box, but slightly warmer tone. That one's from Catrice. And then they also did Neutral Wonderlust, which is more of a neutral palette. So these are two more neutrally options. I thought those looked really pretty as well. I love this formula. I do need a gl glitter glue to make them stick. That's the only thing. Um, and then I bought the Illusionist eyeshadow palette. This is their 15 pan in a cool undertone. And I thought this looked really stunning. I didn't pick it up last year because I wasn't sure on the quality of these. And if this is any good, as good as the other five pans I've already tried, I'm going to be super happy with my choice. Then from Boots, I also picked up some makeup y bits. I finally found this again. They said this was new on the Soap and Glory stand at Boots on Oxford Street. This isn't new because I've owned this before. In fact, I hit pan on it. It's one of the very few bronzers I've actually used to the point that I hit pan and then I found it, it was discontinued and I was really only using up one of the shades in here because this is two shades of bronzer. It's the Soap and Glory Solar Powder Bro uh, Bronzer in the shade Light. I feel it's different from the first time, like the embossing wasn't there last time. But this is one of the best fair-skinned bronzers I have ever found, and I'm so glad it's back. I wish I still had the old version so I could compare, but I feel this has a bit more glow to it. Like, it now has a bit of shimmer, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm definitely going to have to put it on my face to see how I feel, but I'm just glad it was back. And then I got a bunch of lipsticks. I think one of these I actually picked up at Superdrug and not at Boots, um, because the Milani Color Fetish line was available at both. And um, I got 
two of the matte color fetish because that's something I haven't tried yet. I bought Secret, which looks like a really stunning mauve tone, like a lighter, almost pinky peachy mauve. Wanted to try it. And then I also bought 350 Fleur. And this one, I'm not sure what happened to it, but it was completely sealed when I opened it. And then when I opened it, it looked used. So I'm not sure if someone just like resealed a used product in store, one of the employees or whatnot. Like there was actual cello tape holding this thing together. I think it's safe. I sanitize it just to be completely sure, but I'm going to be wearing it for sure. Uh, it seems to be a really beautiful formula anyways. Uh, and these are products I cannot buy back home. Another brand I struggle finding here in the Netherlands is Revlon. And I couldn't find the matte in Sessi Mauve that a lot of people were telling me to try. I couldn't find it, but I was able to find some others. And one of these I've already featured in a video because I put it on and I instantly knew I had to feature it. But these are some of the iconic Revlon shades that I got. I got their super lustrous lipstick in the cream formula in 720 Fire and Ice. It is a more orange tone red, which is not something I'm currently into. But when I swatched it with a tester, it just really spoke to me. And then I also have one of their uh, super lustrous shine lipsticks. And these say that they're new. Do you see that on the sticker? And this is Glossed Up Rose, which is like a rosy tone. It's like a cooler toned. It, it does have a bit of warmth. It's not super cool toned. And then in that same shine formula that says new, I found that shade that you saw in a recent video called Cherries in the Snow. And this is currently in my shop, my stash, because I have already been wearing it. Super comfortable formula. The, the Revlon ones don't stay on your lips. That's the only thing, but I do really enjoy them. Um, really glad to have some Revlon in my collection again. Then of course I had to go to the Glossier store in Soho to pick up the Plow Paid in the bronzer shade. This is in Swept, which is the slightly deeper shade. There is one shade lighter than this, but that was very yellow. And I felt this had a more neutral undertone. And I was like, with a light hand and I'm blending it out, I think I could make this work a little bit better. So I went with that. In Liberties, I bought the C.O. Bigelow, uh, my favorite lip balm. I had some C.O. Bigelow lip balms in the past. Those were sent to me from Canada and I really, really enjoyed them. I can't buy this brand anywhere where I live, but they have it at Liberties apparently. So I bought one of their lip balms again. Um, from Selfridges, I got this, the Estee Lauder uh, Futurist Soft Touch Brightening Skin Sealer. This is the concealer version of the Futurist Hydro Rescue Foundation, which I've been wanting to try, but guess what? My shade, this is 1C, not available in the Netherlands, not for sale anywhere I go. And I looked it up to see if they had it online, like in other places, and they did. So I knew that when I could could find myself an Estee Lauder uh, co uh, counter somewhere, that they would probably have it. And in the UK, they did sell it. So picked it up there. This is the final concealer I will be testing out this year. I am currently, in case you didn't know, I'm really on the hunt for like my next favorite concealer. I had gone for a while without testing a lot of new concealers. And now I have couple, a couple of the newer releases and I want to do like a big reveal towards the end of the year when I've tried all of those new concealers because I still need to test a lot of them out. Um, and then I'm going to come to you just like I always do with foundations. Once I've tried like a couple, I will throw them all together in a video and give you the full lowdown on all of those new bits. So there's definitely going to be a concealer video happening before the end of the year. Also from Selfridges, I got some Mac, which I don't know why, but I was like, you know what? I'm craving MAC lipsticks. I don't know why. And I went with a lip liner as well. So I got the, this is the Maximal Matte Lipstick in the shade Soar. I didn't know that they did Soar as a lipstick. Let me see if I can hold my hand in front of it so you can actually see the shade. I mean, I wasn't aware. So, and Soar Lip Liner was one I used to own and um, that's just a really nice neutral on me. I've yet to put it on my lips. And then also in the Maximal Matte Lipstick, I repurchased a shade I used to own. And this is Mare. 
And I said in the past that I went with Twig because I was I was doubting between Brave, Twig, and um, Mare at the time because those three had expired in my collection. And now I was like, mm, this way I can try that new Maximal lipstick formula. And Soar was like my pick over Brave this time. And then because I'm having a bit of a lip liner moment, I went with Half Red, which is not a shade I hear a lot of people talking about, but it's this really nice, like cooler toned plummy red, but like muted. It's really pretty. And it went really well with these lipstick shades. So got some MAC bits and now I want more MAC lip liners. There's this Dutch MUA that keeps popping up on my TikTok page who does these lip combos and she's making me want like Night Moth and Soar. Like I want like four or five MAC lip liners at the minute. So I think when my paint pot runs out, which is very, very close, maybe around my birthday, I might just make it to the MAC counter in my local store and pick out a couple of more lipsticks and lip liners from MAC to treat myself and get that new paint pot because I only have a teensy tiny bit left in there. I also went to Space NK and in Space NK I picked up two bits. Yes, I did it. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to get these. I just went into store to see if I could swatch them. Um, this is the Rare Beauty Powder Blush in the shade Hope. And this looks dark, but this is the most transparent of the five or six shades we got. So this is a bit to me, these feel very similar, but they're shinier to the, like, to the uh, M Cosmetics Heaven's uh, Glow blushes. Like, that's what they remind me of, but these have more highlighter to them. So they're great as a blush topper. And the MUA in store set to use this under the liquid blush that Rare Beauty does. And I have hope. So I thought maybe I could make like a nice combination with them, but also wear it by itself. But this is quite transparent. It doesn't have a lot of color to it compared to what it looks like in the pen, at least when I swatched it. So I hope that's also the case on the cheeks. And then this product was on my wish list last year, but this shade was out of stock everywhere I went. It's by Rose Ink and it's their cream bronzer in the shade Kawi, Kawi. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and this is a really nice shade of bronzer, I hope. It is a bit yellow, but I think for the summertime, it might work on me. And I've heard so many great things about the Cream Cheek products by Rose Ink. And Space Ink is like the only place where I can really get it from. I think Sephora UK sells it as well, but I don't think they ship it to the Netherlands. That's sometimes an issue there. And the final bits I picked up in London, also from Liberties, were these... Trini London bits. Oh, where did the lip product go? I forgot to grab it. But I had a fourth one on top of this as well. So I got one of the lip products in a more neutral tone. I got a red last year, really liked it. I also got one of their matte products in the shade Freddy. This can be used both on the lips and on the cheeks. Uh, this is a lip, lip to cheek. Um, that's a really sh stunning shade on me. And then I got two more of the uh, eyeshadows because I already had two. So I looked for two shades that could go with it. And I got Magician, which is like a really pretty taupe. And I got Hakate, Hakati, I don't know how to say it. And this is an italic and they are apparently discontinuing these, but this is like the more shimmery formula. So now I have a bunch of these. And uh, I'm good when it comes to Trini London, but I just like stumbled upon that brand that wasn't on my wish list, but it was like, ah, oh, might as well get that. But everything else was wish list stuff. Everything else that I got were things I had put on a list before going there. The only thing I didn't know existed was the Soap and Glory Solar Powder Bronzer. But I just want to try this for laughs to see if it's similar to the one I remember using all those years that I used until I hit pan. I think it just looks different because it has a sunbeam pattern on it. I don't know, but we'll see how it goes. I'm definitely, I definitely have an old blog post somewhere where I review that one. Um, but yeah, I'm glad they brought it back. So yeah, that is my haul for June. I have a lot of new products to play with. So as I already mentioned somewhere in the video, I am going on a low buy because I really need some time to get through all these things, test it out properly, put it on my face, take all the pictures. That's definitely gonna have to happen in the next couple of months. I need to roll them into shop my stashes. Um, and uh, yeah, 
and do reviews. And especially because I got those four palettes from Kim, I now have so much more eyeshadow that I feel comfortable that I can use in like a single month. Um, so uh, I have some catching up to do. Um, so yeah, no more eyeshadow palettes for a little while to come, I think. Um, I will probably sell, like I will probably buy a couple of things to keep the collection up to date. Um, because there are some newly released things that I do want to get my hands on, <laughs> not gonna lie. But yeah, I feel very much like up to date. My wish list is pretty much like gone at this point. Um, really happy with the PR I got, with the gift I got from Kim. And then, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with all the bits I got in London as well. So stay tuned for all of the reviews that are coming your way. I hope soon-ish. And then I hope to see you in my next video very, very soon. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.